There is one thing Dr. Hogan does not like about dinosaurs. Find out what he does not like and hear the truth about dinosaurs as Creation Science Evangelism presents children's video about dinosaurs. And now here's Dr. Hovind. Hey, it's good to have you here today. Today we're going to talk about dinosaurs. Now my name is... My name is... Just a minute here. My name is... Kent Hovind. And I taught science for 15 years. And now I travel around and talk about dinosaurs. Man, I like dinosaurs. Let me tell you a little bit about me first. This... Uh, is not my wife. This is just a picture of her. And we live right here in Pensacola, Florida. And we have dinosaur adventure land at our place, and we have lots of stuff for kids and dinosaurs. And my three children all work in my ministry. Matter of fact, my son, Ken Andrew, is right here. He's running the camera. And he is married to Danielle, who works in your daycare. That's Danielle's wife, or Danielle's husband, Ken Andrew, my son. Other son, Eric, travels and preaches on creation. His wife, Tanya, uh, works in our ministry making videotapes. And then my daughter Marlissa is my scheduling secretary. So it's great having them all right there in the family. You know, boys and girls, I like science. I like to, I collect science books and I like science. Now, when we're telling this story today about dinosaurs, every time you see the smiley face, or if you're watching this tape, if you see a smiley face come up that says beep, that's your signal to stand up, turn around, and sit down as fast as you can. Let's practice. Ready? Beep, stand up, turn around, and sit down. Uh, pretty good, pretty good. Some of you are just a little slow. We'll give you a chance again. Okay, I like science, but <clears throat> science has a long history of teaching things that are wrong. Did you know they used to teach the kids that all the planets go around the Earth? That's wrong. The planets go around the Sun. So that's wrong. They used to teach the kids that a big rock falls faster than a little rock. That's not true. They all fall at the same speed. Sometimes scientists teach things that are just wrong. They used to teach kids, if you're sick, you have bad blood. Take out your blood and you'll get better. They had special places to get your blood taken out. It was the barber shop. The red stripe around the pole was the symbol that you could go there to get your blood taken out if you didn't feel good. And that is wrong. So even though I like science, science is wrong about some things. I think they're wrong today about two things. Number one, they're wrong about how old the earth is. They're teaching the kids the earth is billions of years old, and that is wrong. And they're teaching them that dinosaurs lived millions of years ago, and that is wrong. Most of the books in school say dinosaurs lived millions of years ago. Like this book says, no human being has ever seen a live dinosaur. Does he know that, or does he think that? He thinks that. He doesn't know that, does he? He can't say nobody's ever seen a dinosaur. He didn't talk to everybody that ever lived, did he? See, unless he talked to everybody that ever lived, he can't make that statement. He can think nobody's ever seen a dinosaur, but he doesn't know that. Oh, beep, stand up, turn around twice and sit down. Here's how science is supposed to work, okay? <clears throat> you're supposed to observe the universe, and then you're supposed to create a hypothesis or a theory to explain what you're seeing, and then you're supposed to present evidence to support your theory, and then you're supposed to test it. If your theory is proven wrong, you throw it away and get a new theory. If you can't prove the theory wrong, you probably have the right theory. So I'm going to give you a couple of theories today about dinosaurs. Most of the books in school say the universe began 20 billion years ago with a big bang. I don't believe that's true at all, but that's what the books teach the kids in school. And then they say 4.6 billion years ago the earth cooled down and it formed a hard rocky crust and it began to rain on the rocks for millions of years. And it turned them into oceans. And it melted the rocks and turned them into soup. And the soup came alive three billion years ago. Not true. Not true. But that's what the books are teaching the kids today in school. Not true. Not true at all. They say we all came from the soup. Was your great, 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 grandpa soup? No, mine wasn't either. So, it's true that we have a lot of different kinds of animals, but they did not all come from the soup. Okay, I think God made all the animals. They didn't come from soup like they tell the kids in school. See, I like dinosaurs. And we have lots of dinosaur stuff. We even have dinosaur adventure land at our place. If you want to come over, bring your class over and bring a group of kids and see our dinosaur adventure land. We have lots of cool stuff for dinosaurs. We have swings and slides and rides. I like dinosaurs so much, even my staple puller in my office is... A dinosaur head. 
to pull staples out of paper. The lamp I have on my desk to light things up when I'm working is a dinosaur. I have dinosaurs on my tie. My website is drdino.com. We have lots of dinosaur stuff at our place, and I like dinosaurs. <clears throat> we can come to see Dinosaur Adventure Land where you learn about how God made the dinosaurs. We have videotapes you can watch, and we have adventure stuff, swings and slides and rides. How many of you have been to Dinosaur Adventure Land to swing on my swings before? You will have a wonderful time. We have a climbing wall and a sandbox and a two-story circular slide. You go down, come out real dizzy and try to figure out where you are when you get out. You can try to break a record. And if you break a record, you get a $5 gift certificate to use in our bookstore to buy some stuff about dinosaurs, if you like. I like dinosaurs, but <clears throat> there is one thing about them I do not like. And I'm going to tell you about that in just a minute. This one is the Apatosaurus. Now, the Apatosaurus had a long, skinny neck, and when he gets a sore throat, it's a very serious problem. I like the Apatosaurus. But there is one thing about them I do not like. And I'm going to tell you about that in just a minute. Okay? Now this one is the Brachiosaurus. The Brachiosaurus has the biggest, is the biggest one. A long, long neck. I have right here on the table with me today a real toe bone from a Brachiosaurus. That's one of his toe bones. If you feel your finger, you've got three bones in each finger. The second one back right there, that's the Brachiosaur's toe bone. Now, kids, this is going to be complicated, so listen carefully, okay? The reason he had those big toe bones is because he had big toes. How many can figure that out with no problem, okay? He had those big toes because he had a big leg. There's a man standing next to the leg of a Brachiosaurus. Their foot was so big, it made a footprint big enough you could take a bath in his footprint. The Brachiosaur footprint was huge. I have right here a copy of a three-toed dinosaur. This footprint isn't near as big as the Brachiosaur. The Brachiosaur footprint was bigger than that. He was a whopper. His front leg is 20 feet tall past the ceiling in this auditorium. Matter of fact, his, the biggest one they ever found was 60 feet tall. This is exactly what he would look like next to a school bus. He was big. You know how big buses are, right? You've been on a bus before. Imagine how big. He would walk by and poof, poof, smash it flat, couldn't he? So they were pretty good size. The Brachiosaur was a big dinosaur. The biggest one they found was 60 feet tall. It weighed 100 tons. That's the same as 14 school buses put together. That means if he was to come by and step on you, you would be deeply impressed by him. <laughs> you would be road pizza when he got done. Now, kids, I like the Brachiosaur. Oh, beep, stand up, turn around, sit down. There you go. But there's one thing about the Brachiosaur I do not like. And I'm going to tell you about that in just a minute. Okay? This one is the Stegosaurus. Now, the Stegosaurus has plates on his back. And I have with me today, right here on the table, a copy of one of the plates off the back of a Stegosaurus. This is one of the small ones down by his tail. The big ones on his back were bigger than this. That is a copy of a Stegosaurus plate. On his tail, he had spikes. And I have with me today a copy of one of the tail spikes from a Stegosaurus. Is it real? No, nope, it's a replica. The real ones are breakable, and they keep those in museums so they don't get broken. Then they make copies so kids can see them. And we'll let you feel this in just a minute. But that was what he had on his tail. Can you imagine if he had four of these on his tail, and he was mad at you, and he's swinging his tail at you? You better get out of the way, right? Now, the Stegosaurus apparently was not too smart. His brain was only as big as a walnut. Little tiny brain for that big old body. And I like the Stegosaurus, but there's one thing about him I do not like. And I'm going to tell you about that in just a minute. This one is the Tyrannosaurus Rex. T-Rex. Unless he lives south of the Rio, 
Then he's Tyrannosaurus Mex. I like the T-Rex. The biggest one they ever found was 24 feet tall, taller than the ceiling in here. I have with me today, right here on the table, and you can feel this in a few minutes, a copy of one of his toenails. No, you would not want him to scratch your back, would you? Yeah, ooh, wow. Also, he had two little bitty front fingernails. You see those two little bitty front fingernails? That's one of the fingernails from a T-Rex. Boys and girls, you know what this means? This means he had to be very careful when he picked his nose. If you bump him in the elbow while he's picking his nose, he'll be mad at you for a long time. And even though his head was a little smaller than a Volkswagen, I have a copy right here today on the table of his brain. That's all they had for a brain right there. He was not too smart. And I like studying about the T-Rex, but there is one thing about him I do not like. And I'm going to tell you about that in just a minute. Okay, This one is a plesiosaur. He's a very polite dinosaur. He always says, please. He has four flippers so that he can fly through the air. No, swim. So he can swim through the air. Water. Oh, fly through the water. Swim through the water. Okay. He had four flippers and he also had a very long neck. Real long neck. And when the doctor wanted to look down his throat, he had to look way down there. And I like studying about the uh, plesiosaurs. There's three different kinds. There's the long neck plesiosaur, there's the short neck chronosaur, and there's the elasmosaur. And there's probably several others we haven't found yet. But there's one thing about the plesiosaur I do not like. And I'm going to tell you about that in just a minute. Okay? This one is a styracosaurus. Now, boys and girls, I cannot prove this, but I have been studying dinosaurs for a long time. And I believe the Styracosaurus is probably the dinosaur that invented hairspray. How else would you keep all that up, right? <laughs> I like Styracosaurus, but there is one thing about them I do not like. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you about that in just a minute, okay? This is my blondosaurus. You just have to talk to her kind of slow, okay? And this one is a three-horn triceratops. Now, the triceratops had big horns on his head, and I have with me today a copy. Oh, wait a minute. Ooh, wow, this one's growling. These horns on his head right here were pretty big. This is a replica of a three-horn horn. If he was to come charging after you, it would be very bad. You better get out of his way, right? The three-horn triceratops. They're a pretty neat dinosaur, and I like the triceratops, but there's one thing about them I do not like. And I'm going to tell you about that in just a minute. Okay? Now, this one is called a parasaurolophus. The parasaurolophus had a weird bump on the back of his head, some people think the Parasaurolophus was able to breathe fire. Because that bump on his head was hollow, and it's connected to his sinuses. Hmm, I don't know about that, but it's an interesting theory. I like the Parasaurolophus, but there's one thing about him I do not like. And I'm going to tell you about that in just a minute. Okay? Now we have Barney the Dumasaurus. Oh, dinosaur. It's not dumbasaur? Yeah. Dinosaur. Okay. Oh, beep. Stand up. Turn around. Sit down. Hurry, hurry, hurry. There we go. Boys and girls, I like all the dinosaurs. But there is one thing about them I do not like. And I'm going to tell you about that right now. The one thing about all the dinosaurs I do not like. I don't like the way, every time you pick up a book about dinosaurs, you open up to the first page and guess what it says? Millions of years ago, dinosaurs lived on the earth. Meh, that is not true. 
What you have to do, you have to get a little buzzer in your brain, and whenever somebody tells you something that's not true, you say, meh, not true. So I read those books, and it says, dinosaurs lived millions of years ago, and I go, meh, that's not true. All the books, though, say, you go to the library, and you pick up books on dinosaurs, you go to the zoo, you go to the park, you go to the museum, and they're talking about dinosaurs, and they show you the dinosaur bones, and then they always have to say, millions of years ago, and my little buzzer goes off, man, not true. Let me tell you another story about dinosaurs. I believe God made the world in six days, about 6,000 years ago, just like the Bible says. And then 4,400 years ago, there was a big flood. A guy named Noah built a huge boat and saved all the critters on there. Now, before the flood came, the world was a lot different. The people lived to be 900 years old before the flood came. And during that time, when people are living a long time, the dinosaurs would be big because they're just big reptiles. Did you know even today, reptiles never stop growing? Now, what would happen to a lizard if he, he grows all of his life and you let him live to be 900 years old? Ooh, you would have a dinosaur, a big lizard. See, dinosaurs were just big lizards that lived in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve. That's Komodo dragon. That's a whopper, isn't it? Yep. So, dinosaurs did not live millions of years ago. They were just big lizards. Hey, you can go to the pet store today and see these kind of lizards for sale called a Jackson Chameleon. Guess what? He's got three horns on his face. What do you think he would look like when he got to be about uh, 20 feet long? A triceratops, probably, yeah. See, dinosaurs always lived with people. And then Noah took dinosaurs on the ark. You say, dinosaurs on the ark, they're kind of big, aren't they? Well, the big ones were big, but the little ones were little. And Noah was 600 years old when he built that boat. He was probably smart enough to figure out, you don't have to bring the biggest ones you can find. Bring two babies. Just be sure to get a pink one and a blue one. That'll be important later. There's all sorts of reasons for bringing babies on the ark, okay? They're smaller, they eat less, they weigh less. Noah brought babies. And after the flood was over, people's lifespans got shorter. They only lived to be 400, then 200, then 100. And so dinosaurs were dying off because they couldn't live long enough. The second problem they had, people were killing them. Back in those days, they called them dragons. How many have ever heard of dragons before? Ever heard of dragons? They used to call them dragons because the word dinosaur wasn't even made up till 1841. That's just 150 years ago. So throughout most of history, they called them dragons. Beep, stand up, turn around, sit down. Oh, that was so slow. Let's try it again. Ready? Beep. Stand up, turn around, sit down. I don't know. Some of you are... You're so slow, someday you may get run over by a herd of stampeding turtles. What happened, as the people began to multiply after the flood was over, there was only eight people that survived, they started having kids and grandkids and great-grandkids, and pretty soon there got to be more people, and they started killing off the dragons. The same thing happened right here in Escambia County. People moved in here. Nobody wanted to live next door to a grizzly bear, so they started killing off the grizzly bears. And now there aren't any more grizzly bears, but there probably used to be. So that's what happened. When people began to move into the area, they started killing off the dragons. And there's all sorts of stories of people killing dragons. They found an old brick wall in Babylon that was built 2,600 years ago. And on that brick wall, there were dragons. Now, how did they know about dragons in Babylon 2,600 years ago? Alexander the Great said his soldiers were scared by dragons when they conquered part of India in 300 B.C. This Roman mosaic was made showing two long-necked dragons fighting or kissing. You can't tell what's going on for sure. How did they know about dragons during the times of the Romans, just uh, 200 years after Christ? You can go all through history and see, hear stories about people killing dragons. St. George is famous for slaying a dragon almost 2,000 years ago. Beowulf slew dragons. The story says Beowulf killed Grendel the dragon by jerking off one of his arms. And he bled to death. You know, most people say the T-Rex had pretty puny front arms. And if you could ever get past his head and figure out a way to grab his arm, you probably <coughs> could jerk it right off. And then he would bleed to death. They did find an old Babylonian cylinder seal of a guy pulling the arm off of a dragon. There are dragon stories from countries all over the world. Ancient pottery sometimes has 
dinosaurs on it. Now, how did they know about dinosaurs to put them on their pottery? This guy says, nobody's ever seen a dinosaur. Does he know that or does he think that? He thinks that. He doesn't know that, does he? They put dinosaurs on their pottery. Of course they saw alive dinosaurs. There are stories all through history of people seeing these things. Every country in the world just about has stories of dragons. Here's a Russian medallion showing somebody slaying a dragon. A Bulgarian postage stamp showing somebody killing a dragon. A guy in Ireland said he killed a dragon that had iron nails on his tail. I would say the tail spike from a stegosaur would probably remind you of that, wouldn't it? Hmm. Beep. Stand up, turn around, sit down. The Vikings built ships with dragon heads on them. Why would they put dragon heads on their boats? Well, because they were afraid of the dragons that lived in the water. A famous Norwegian man named Siegfried slew the dragon Fafner and became a hero in Norse Norwegian literature. Marco Polo lived in China for 17 years. When he came back, he told people the emperor is raising dragons to pull chariots in his parades. Why would he say that? Well, probably because the emperor was raising dragons to pull chariots in his parades. If you get the old Chinese history books, you'll find out in 1611, they appointed the post of royal dragon feeder. Now tell me, why do you need a royal dragon feeder? To feed the dragon. To feed the dragon. <laughs> That's exactly right. One guy in Italy was walking his cows out to the pasture, and a dragon scared his cows, and so he smacked it on the head with a stick and broke its neck. And they had it stuffed and mounted for a museum display in 1572. A guy in Ireland, or a guy in France, killed a dragon that had iron spikes on its swords on its face. They renamed the whole city to honor the man who slew the dragon. Probably a triceratops with iron swords on his face. Boy, I wouldn't want to go up against one of these guys and try to kill him. But this guy was brave enough to do it. You know, Sometimes, on the walls of Grand Canyon, they find pictures of dinosaurs. The Indians hunted dinosaurs. They didn't live millions of years ago. They carved pictures of them on the walls of the Grand Canyon. There's a cave in Australia where they found a dinosaur carved into the walls of the cave in Australia with a person running away from it. This man says nobody's ever seen a live dinosaur. Does he know that or does he think that? He thinks that. He doesn't know that, does he? You go down to Peru, South America... You will find the Ica stones. The Ica stones were found in the early 1500s by the Spanish conquistadors. They came through there and said they found stones with strange animals on them. They had never seen anything like it before. They're known as the Ica stones. These stones had dinosaurs carved on them. Now, how did they know about dinosaurs to carve them on these rocks if nobody's ever seen a dinosaur? Look at that one. You can see the triceratops. Behind him, you see the stegosaurus. You see the stegosaurus on the top with the plates on his back? This guy's hitting one on the head with something. You better make your first hit a good one. It might be the only one you get. <laughs> Dr. Ball is a friend of mine. He's got some of the stones. You can get on the website, bible.ca slash tracks, if you want to see more about these Ica stones. There's quite a bit of information on there. Pastor Dennis Swift is a friend of mine in Oregon. He's been down there a bunch of times collecting the stones with dinosaurs on them. Hmm. Now, they tell you in school, nobody's ever seen a dinosaur, and they lived millions of years ago. That is just not true. Beep. Stand up, turn around, sit down. Down in Mexico, they found more of these stones. 56,000 ceramic figures of dinosaurs. Hmm. Here's a guy cutting the head off of a dinosaur. Here's a man riding one. How would you like to ride a dinosaur? Would that be fun? Man, that would be a blast, wouldn't it? They found old pottery in this Indian burial mound, and there was a dinosaur on the pottery. The dead Indian was wrapped up in a blanket. All around the blanket were dinosaurs. They knew about dinosaurs. They did not live millions of years ago. And that's the one thing I don't like about dinosaurs, is the way everybody says, oh, they lived millions of years ago. Man, that is just not true. They found some old Roman swords, in Arizona, of all places. See, the Romans came back and forth across the ocean way before Columbus did. And on some of those Roman swords, they found dinosaurs. Now, how would they know about dinosaurs to put them on their swords if dinosaurs lived millions of years ago? He just thinks that. They don't know that. You know, they used to sail around the world in sailing ships before they had motors. 
on those sailing boats, they would often report sighting sea monsters. There are lots of stories of people sighting sea monsters. It's a pretty big ocean out there. They saw sea monsters. Beep, stand up, turn around, sit down. The Bible even talks about dinosaurs. In the book of Job, in the Bible, Job is right in the center of the Bible. In Job chapter 40, it talks about an animal called behemoth. And if you read about that in Job chapter 40, it's probably talking about the Brachiosaurus. It says he's got a tail like a cedar tree. Now some Bibles say it's an elephant. Elephants do not have a tail like a cedar tree. They have a little bitty tail, don't they? And hippopotamus, some Bibles say hippopotamus. They have a little bitty tail also. I think behemoth is probably the Brachiosaurus. The Bible says he lives in the fens, in the swamp. Well, the biggest swamp in the world is in the middle of Africa. That swamp is huge. Here's what it looks like next to America. I mean, America is pretty big, but that swamp in Africa is gigantic. They say there are still dinosaurs alive in that swamp right now. There have been many expeditions into that swamp, and they've come back saying, look, there are dinosaurs still living. In 1910, now they're not very big, they're only about 20 feet long. Most of the people report seeing what is called the Apatosaurus. Where did my Apatosaurus go? He's here on, oh, here he is. Most people say this is what they see in the swamp in Africa. They're only about 20 feet long, small dinosaurs, still alive. Many people have gone over there to try to get them, to try to photograph these things, or to talk to people who have seen them. Dinosaurs still alive? A missionary friend of mine was over there for 42 years. He said the people in his area kept talking about an animal called Mokele Mbembe. And when he showed them a picture of a dinosaur, they say, yep, that's Mokele Mbembe. One scientist went over there, talked to the natives, and he showed them one of these, and they said, yep, that's Mokele Mbembe. And he said, fellas, they've been dead for 70 million years. And the natives said, oh, we're sorry, we didn't know about that. We've never been to America to study evolution. All we know is we see them out there once in a while when we're fishing. Now, there aren't very many left, okay? They're kind of small, about 20 feet long and very rare, probably going to go extinct you know, pretty soon like many other animals have done. But lots of people claim they've seen these animals. They live underwater, and when they get hungry, they come up and eat plants along the side of the river. It's called the Malombo plant. A missionary, missionary friend of mine, Eugene Thomas, said a couple pygmies in his church killed one and ate it back in the 50s. One missionary friend of mine said he and his wife saw one of these in Kenya. It had plates on its back. Hmm. How many have ever heard of a lake in Scotland called Loch Ness, the Loch Ness Monster? Did you know 11,000 people claim they've seen the Loch Ness Monster? Almost all of them claim it is a plesiosaurus. Now why would 11,000 people claim they've seen a plesiosaur? I think if 11,000 people claim they've seen one, then they didn't live millions of years ago. Lots of people claim they've seen the Loch Ness Monster. You can look at some of these pictures. One guy nearly ran into Nessie on his motorcycle. He was crossing the road in front of him in the middle of the night. One man put a camera down underwater and left it there for a couple of days. It had a special machine hooked up to it. If anything moved in front of the camera, it would flash a picture. Underwater, he got pictures of giant flippers going past his camera. Big diamond-shaped flippers. Hmm. Beep. Stand up, turn around, sit down. Down in England, in Cornwallis, they find people who claim they've seen this animal, the Cornw Cornish Sea Serpent. Japanese fishing boat pulled this up when they were fishing in 1977. Pulled it up out of the water. The people who had it said it was a plesiosaurus. Now, some scientists have argued, no, it's not a plesiosaur, it's just a shark. Well, the guys who had it said it was a plesiosaur. It does have similar protein to a shark, but that doesn't mean it is a shark, okay? Nobody knows what plesiosaur protein looks like, for one thing. But the game even made a special stamp for Japanese mail. I've got one of the stamps right here on the yellow poster. If you want to come later and see the yellow, this yellow poster, you can see the stamp made for Japanese mail, 1977. In Russia, they've been seen. In Russia, they've seen dinosaurs or heard about them washing up on the beach. In China, in Japan, in Canada, there are many lake monsters reported in Canada. There's a lake in British Columbia called Ogopogo, where Ogopogo lives. People see that one. They call it the 
Lake Okanagan monster, the Ogopogo. You know, kids, there have been dinosaurs reported in Lake Champlain between New York and Vermont. It's called Champ. Lots of folks claim they've seen these still alive. In California, in 1925, a dead one washed up on the beach. Here's the head. The guy behind him has a rifle, just in case it moves again. The neck was 20 feet long. Most people said it was a plesiosaurus. One atheist wrote me a letter and said, Hovind, you're so stupid, don't you know that was a whale? Would you please show me any neck on a whale? Whales don't have much of a neck, do they? They sure don't have a long, skinny neck 20 feet long, do they? <laughs> no, they don't. The people who saw it said, look, it's a plesiosaurus. This little animal washed up on the beach in Lake Erie, Ohio. One guy picked it up, took it home, and stuffed it. He's a taxidermist. My friend Carl Baugh bought it. He's down in Texas with it now. And still haven't figured out what it is. Has four little flippers. Hmm. Did you know there could be some pterodactyls still alive? There have been people who claim they've seen pterodactyls still alive. Some of the missionaries report these in Papua New Guinea. They've been reported in Kenya, Africa. It's not technically a dinosaur, but it's in all the dinosaur books. Can you imagine there have been a lot of folks claiming they've seen pterodactyls? The Sioux Indians had legends about the Thunderbird. They said a giant bird got hit by lightning, and when they found it a few days later, the buzzards had picked all the meat off, and all was left with was the bones. And on the back of its head, it had a long bump, a bony crest on the back of its head. Interesting. They make Indian prayer sticks have the head of a pterodactyl on it. But when Henry Ford made his Thunderbird, he put an eagle on the taillight. Meh, nah, wrong. Should have been a pterodactyl. These guys just don't get it right. Oh, beep, stand up, turn around, sit down. So the one thing I don't like about dinosaurs is the way they always say they lived millions of years ago. Okay, kids, take your thumb and finger like this. I want you to reach out in the air and grab a little lie detector, beep, and put it in your head. Meh. We're going to put a buzzer in there. Every time somebody tells you a lie, it's going to go, meh, meh. You ready? Let's practice. We're going to practice the lie detector. Boys and girls, this is a brachiosaur. He was a huge dinosaur. The biggest one was 60 feet tall. Real big. The heaviest one weighed over 100, 100 tons. He lived 70 million years ago. Meh, wrong. You get these books on dinosaurs, and they've got all that good stuff in there. You can learn about dinosaurs, and then they have to throw in the lies. You pick up a book about dinosaurs. Boys and girls, this is the Stegosaurus. He had plates on his back. He had four spikes on his tail. He lived 70 million years ago. Meh, wrong. You just got to learn. Don't let somebody fool you about dinosaurs because they did not live millions of years ago. Stand up, turn around, have a seat. So the kids in school are going to be taught you are just an animal and you evolved. And that's just not true. God made this world and God owns it. And God makes the rules. And we have broken his rules. You know, one of God's commandments says, don't lie. Have you told, how many of you have ever told a lie before? You said something that wasn't true? The Bible says, do not bear false witness. Uh, we broke God's rules, didn't we? The Bible says, don't steal. How many, have, how many ever stole something? Took something that didn't belong to you? See? We're guilty. We've broken God's rules, which means we're going to be punished, or we need to find a substitute. And Jesus Christ wants to be your substitute. He wants to pay for your sins. If you've never asked Jesus Christ to come into your heart and save you, you ought to do that today. Because if, you're not, if you don't have Jesus in your heart, you've got to pay for your own sins. And the Bible says if you have one sin, you deserve to go to hell. Well, I've got a whole lot more than one. I really deserve to go to hell. But I ask Jesus Christ to forgive me. Hey, if you died today, where would you go? You ought to think about it because you're going to be dead for a real long time. You better make sure you're going to heaven. 
All you have in this life is a little bitty dash between two dates. Then it's going to be over. Now you kids are all pretty young here now, but someday you're going to be old. Then you're going to die. You're going to go stand before God. I want to make sure you're going to be in heaven. You better make sure you've been saved. Now, if you've already gotten saved, you already asked Jesus to forgive your sins, find something to do for the Lord. Probably every one of you has neighbor kids that are learning dinosaurs lived millions of years ago, right? You ought to tell them the truth. You can be a missionary to the kids in your own neighborhood. Get some dinosaurs out, invite the kids over to play with your dinosaurs, and you could teach them the truth. You could say, hey, neighbor, did you know dinosaurs have always lived with people? God made them in the Garden of Eden. They took, Noah took them on the ark. And someday, we're going to get to live here on earth for a thousand years when God's going to fix the world back like it used to be. And you're going to be able to have your own pet dinosaurs. How would you like to have a pet dinosaur in your backyard? Wouldn't that be fun? You could ride them to school in the morning. After you get out of school, you could invite all the neighbor kids over to sit on his back and he could ride you around the block. Take you for a walk out in the woods. Man, that's going to be so fun. If you've not asked Jesus Christ to save you, I'd suggest you do that first of all. Now, if you are saved, you ought to find somebody else you can tell about Jesus and tell them how to get saved. Well, boys and girls, the one thing I don't like about dinosaurs is the way Satan keeps using them to teach boys and girls a lie. They did not live millions of years ago. God's word is true. You can count on God's word from cover to cover. Read that book and do what it says. Thank you so much for joining us. Bye-bye. want to know more about how to combat the godless theory of evolution? Creation Science Evangelism offers four great tools that help strengthen the faith of believers and win the lost to Christ. After 15 years of teaching high school science, Dr. Hoven began Creation Science Evangelism in 1989. We are a ministry that is dedicated to providing tools which will help you combat the evolution philosophy that is destroying the faith of millions every year. The first tool Creation Science offers is their powerful, life-changing video series. Over the last 12 years, well over a million videotapes of Dr. Hovind's seminar have circled the globe. They are reaping a harvest of souls for the kingdom of Christ, as well as helping restore the faith of many thousands confused by the evolution propaganda to which they've been subjected. These videos are available in English, Russian, French, Spanish, Japanese, and sign language. The Age of the Earth, first of the seven-part series, teaches that God created the universe about 6,000 years ago in six literal days. Could this be true? Can it be scientifically proven that the earth is not billions of years old? This tape gives solid scientific evidence that the earth is young and that the Bible is scientifically accurate. How did the environment of the original creation differ from ours today? And how would this allow men to live over 900 years? Can Christians have a good explanation for the existence of dinosaurs? Could some dinosaurs still be alive today? These and many more questions are covered in the second and third part of the series. Evolution has permeated public school textbooks with false and fraudulent information. This video exposes nearly 30 lies commonly found in textbooks. Every public school student, teacher, and school board member needs to watch part four of this series. Find out if you have been lied to in your textbooks. Discover the terrible difference evolutionary beliefs have made in the past as well as in recent history in our video number five. Dictators throughout time have used their evolution-based philosophies to rationalize their brutal actions. Learn how evolution propaganda is being used today to prepare people for the new world order. This is just a taste of all the information the 17-hour seminar series has to offer. 
Also available are college courses that expand on the seminars in great detail. For those who can handle a more confrontational atmosphere, our debate series is just for you. I said, now, Mr. Patterson, if you think the tailbone is a vestigial, I, Kent Hovind, will pay to have yours removed. Dr. Hovind has debated a wide range of atheists and evolutionists all over the country. And you're sure to find these 12 debates very exciting. These would be perfect to present to that scientifically minded person who likes to argue their point. Our topical series includes exciting topics like why evolution is stupid, public school presentation, children's video about dinosaurs, the Bible and health, Leviathan, the fire-breathing dragon, and many more. Creation Science also offers a variety of visuals like the longevity chart, which presents the entire lineage of Adam to Joseph as given in Genesis. It's exciting to see exactly how many generations were alive at the same time. Hundreds of books on a variety of subjects, videos on incredible creatures that defy evolution, t-shirts, fossils, and more. Make Creation Science Evangelism the one-stop shopping center for your creation material needs. Our two websites, www.drdino.com and www.dinosauradventureland.com, provide our second tool for evangelism. DrDino.com is packed with lots of information, from charts and graphs to articles and frequently asked questions. This is also where you will find more information on all of the products CSE has to offer. DinosaurAdventureLand.com is great for the kids. They can play lots of fun games and see unusual rides and activities located at Dinosaur Adventureland in Pensacola, Florida. Thousands visit our sites regularly to gain insight into God's creation. The third tool available to you is the live seminars conducted by Dr. Hovind and his son Eric. Since 1989, Dr. Hovind has held seminars and debates in hundreds of churches, schools, and universities in 49 states and 30 foreign countries. His fast-paced, illustrated seminars cover diverse topics, such as evidence for a young earth, how long Adam lived, dinosaurs living with man, where races came from, radiometric dating, and much more. Our fourth tool is the new exciting Dinosaur Adventureland. Many thousands have come from all across America to visit our museum, creation bookstore, science center, and theme park, where God gets the glory for science. Our unusual swings, rides, and activities each have a science lesson as well as a spiritual lesson. And captivate everyone from age 4 to 94. To order material, find out how to schedule a seminar at your church, or get more information about Dinosaur Adventureland, write to us at Creation Science Evangelism, 29 Cummings Road, Pensacola, Florida, 32503, or call us at 850-479-3466, or toll free in the U.S., 877-479-3466.